stroke. Plus two. Oh, so this one works. Okay. So now you can hear me, right? Okay, thank you. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Radovan Sinek. I work as quality engineer in BRMS QE here in Red Hat. Uh, in QE, well, we like to destroy things, of course, and we also like to play with things. And OptaPlanner is thing uh, which is nice to play with. And recently, uh, OptaPlanner 6 has been released, and I'm going to tell you about some new features which I found interesting. Uh, let me begin with a question. Who already worked or played with OptaPlanner? Raise your hands, please. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it counts. Uh, thank you. So I will try to give you just some short introduction. OptaPlanner. Uh, solves uh, planning problems. Uh, it's useful to optimization of business resources. These problems are very probably NP complete, and you want to uh, achieve a good solution in a reasonable time. Good thing is you don't need to implement any algorithms, and moreover you can easily switch between several provided algorithms just by configuration changes. But still, you have to do something. You have to model your problem domain, Java classes with some annotations. Uh, you have to provide some fitness functions. Fitness functions returns a score, and OptaPlanner can distinguish between two different solutions based on the score returned by fitness function. When you are done with domain and fitness function, configuration comes. Uh, you need to choose some algorithms, provide some parameters, and try it. Last thing, benchmarking. Uh, not every algorithm and not Every combination of parameters is most suitable to your concrete problem. So you have to find out by benchmarking, by trying several combinations, which suits uh, better. So what's new? The name has been changed, at least. Uh, the project has been called Drills Planner before, but it matured to a standalone project called OptaPlanner. And the change of name isn't the only new thing, of course. We have also new features. Uh, we have automated solution cloning, shadow variables, some improvements. Uh, when you like to write your fitness function in the rules. Uh, new score types, new local search algorithms, and some benchmarking improvements. So what can help you when you are dealing with domain? Automated solution cloning. Uh, in Planner version 5, you have to provide uh, some code to clone the solution because uh, Planner uh, changes some working solution, changes those planning entities and the references to planning variables. And each time it reaches a new best solution, it has to clone it and save it in order to continue with changes to this working solution. So you have to do a deep clone of your planning solution class, clone of your planning entities, 
but you can reuse your planning variable instances because these don't change. Only references from planning entity to planning variables. But still, this code, uh, this code is uh, error prone and you don't like to do this. It would be nice if OptaPlanner can clone the solution itself. Yes, big surprise, it can. Uh, by default, it uses this uh, field accessor solution cloner, which clones your solution using a Java reflection. And you don't need to worry about solution cloning anymore. Of course, if you want to, there is still the possibility to clone a solution on your own. Just implement this interface, planning clonable, this method, and OptaPlanner will use your code instead of the built-in field accessor solution cloner. Next thing, shadow variables. Well, I have talked about planning entities, about planning variables. Uh, very simply, how OptaPlanner works, it changes those references for plan from planning entities to different planning variables and try to evaluate uh, the fitness function to find out if the solution is better or worse, and so on. Uh, in this way, as I described it, the planning variable is genuine uh, planning variable, and shadow variable is something that can be computed from s the state of this genuine planning variables. Uh, let me show you on vehicle routing problem with time windows. These are examples shipped to get, uh, together with OptaPlanner, so you can download it, run, and see what they do. So vehicle routing is this one. I will choose some data set and start solving. Uh, in this uh, planning problem, we have some customers we have some vehicles from a depot, and we want to deliver goods to those customers and minimize fuel usage. And uh, time window variant, uh, there is more problem to solve. Uh, each customer is available only in a certain time. And of course, you want to deliver good to each customer when he is available. When he is not home, no reason to deliver him those goods. So, if you want to implement it, you need to know arrival time to each customer. And this arrival time is the shadow variable because it can be computed from the genuine planning variable which is the preview standstill of the vehicle. So uh, every customer has reference to the preview standstill, let's say also customer. And OptaPlanner changes the order the vehicle serves these customers. So it changes the preview standstill. And when the preview standstill is changed, it automatically updates those shadow variable that is uh, this arrival time. For example, if I do something like this, uh, the path has changed and maybe some vehicle has been added from those available and those changes happened.
there is a question, well, how to update this shadow variable? Uh, simply by providing a planning variable listener in an annotation over the genuine planning variables. So let me show you a bit of Java code. Yeah, this is a customer class, and here we have preview standstill, getter for preview standstill, and it's marked as planning variable. And here we have variable listener classes. Uh, the example is more complex, but here is this class, time arrival, or arrival time updating variable listener, which updates uh, the arrival time when this preview standstill changes. That was for the problem domain. So let's approach to fitness function. Uh, if you want to implement your fitness function uh, in rules, which uh, can be considered a uh, best practice, uh, you had to, in Planner 5, uh, logically insert some facts for every uh, broken constraint. And after that, accumulate all those uh, constraints in order to get total score and update the score to score holder. Uh, the improvement is in OptaPlanner 6 that you can work directly with the score holder from your rules that model your constraints. Again, let me show you. Uh, here is some example I made before. Uh, it's about uh, optimization of uh, job queue in Jenkins. It's uh, similar to cloud balance problem, which is one of the uh, OptaPlanner examples you can try. Uh, never mind. Uh, here are some hard constraints. We have also soft constraints. So for example, uh, we must enforce that for every machine there can be only one job. And when this constraint is broken, you logically insert some constraint occurrence with some name. We tell him we have a negative uh, hard score and some value. And here we, are, we have more rules which do the accumulation of those constraint occurrences and the total score updates to score holder. The same example modified for OptaPlanner 6. We just use directly the score holder at the hard constraint and provide K context, which is uh, provided by the rules engines out of the box, and the value. But be aware, take a look at the sign. Here, we pass the information about that uh, this is a negative score. If you forget about it and put there only value without change of sign, <laughs> as, by the way, I did when I was preparing this example, uh, you will revert OctaPlanner for breaking constraints instead of penalize it. So it's a bit tricky. Uh, next, 
uh, we have some new built-in scores. Uh, as I can remember, uh, Planner 5 provided only two score types, simple and hard soft. Now you have more options. There is a hard medium soft score and if it is still not enough for you, you can use bendable score type. Bendable score type has a variable count of score levels. You can configure it in your solo configuration as follows. So you specify number of uh, hard score levels and number of soft score levels. Uh, this is especially useful uh, when you are trying to maybe misuse uh, weighted score. Uh, like for example, if you have one constraint and you want to express it's a million times more important than another constraint, well, there is a chance you are right and uh, it's a real situation, but uh, there is also a chance uh, it's not a million, not two million. Uh, it's just a completely different score level. And uh, this is a situation where bendable score type can help you. Okay, now we are done with problem domain, with fitness function, and time has come to look at the configuration. What you can configure, of course, algorithms. Uh, there are not many interesting uh, changes in construction heuristics, uh, which initializes your solution, but there are new meta-heuristics, local search algorithms. Uh, Planner 5 started with two local search algorithms. It was uh, Taboo Search, a variant of hill climbing, and simulated any link. Now we have two more. It's late acceptance and step counting uh, hill climbing. Both are uh, variants of uh, hill climbing algorithm. Also we have a uh, nice improvement to taboo search. Let's start with late acceptance. Another question. Uh, who knows N Queen's problem? Raise your hands, please. Okay. So just in short, uh, we have some chessboard, we have some queens, four of them in this example, and we want to place those queens over the chessboard so that no queen can attach any other, uh, attack any other, sorry. Uh, for each pair of uh, attacking que uh, queens, we have broken constraint and uh, optimal score is zero, so no queen can attack any other queen. Uh, late acceptance uses, let's say, buffer of scores from previous steps. And in this case, the parameter late acceptance size is free. And we start with initial solution, very likely provided by construction heuristic, which run before. And we have score minus four. Okay, we can remember this score here. And do the first step. Uh, in this move, the result score is minus two. We want to compare it with this score, but there is no score. Okay, uh, any move is accepted. And minus two goes on the top. Uh, minus four goes one box below. Another move, minus three, but still nothing to compare with, so accept it. And minus three goes here, minus two, one box below. And finally, we have minus four here. So next move, 
let's move this queen there. Uh, the resulting score would be minus five, but it's worse than minus four. So this move won't be accepted. Sorry. Next, this move can provide you score minus three. Well, that's better, so we can accept it. And of course, uh, minus four is out of the game. Minus two takes its place. So threshold is minus two. First move that won't be accepted. Next, minus four. Two bad results, sorry. Minus one. Yes, nice. We can accept this move. And few steps further, we can reach the optimal solution. I'll take a look, you can verify. No queen can attack each other. And the score is zero, that's what we wanted. Step counting, uh, hill climbing is, uh, I would say, very similar to late acceptance. Uh, there is one difference, we don't need to keep a buffer of scores, we just need to remember one single score for next n steps, and that's the threshold. In other words, uh, every n steps we use a score from the actual st step as the new threshold. And last one, the improvement of taboo search. It's called ratio taboo search. Well, taboo search algorithm is about, uh, of course, uh, hill climbing. And you have some memory of taboo objects, which can be planning entities, variables, solutions or even moves. You mark them taboo and then and they won't be used for next step. So you can avoid uh, loops in solving. Uh, that's nice but you have to provide a number. Uh, let's say 10 planning entities will be taboo on or 1,000 of solutions. What if you have data sets of different size, small data sets, big data sets? Uh, the taboo size could differ to perform well. So it would be nice to say, well, let's have 5% of planning entities taboo. And uh, that's exactly what this improvement does. So you can express your taboo size relatively. You can save your benchmarking time because you don't have to examine your uh, configurations over uh, data sets of different size. And more important, you don't have to do some uh, runtime configuration update. Uh, like, well, I have a new data set. Let's see how many planning entities we have there. Okay, let's set taboo size accordingly. Simply done. Next step, the last one, is benchmarking. We have also some improvements here. Uh, mainly uh, improvements in benchmark report. We have some new graphs, some new statistics. And again, let me show you. I have prepared some benchmark report. Uh, 
Uh, okay. Uh, it is also from vehicle routing problem, and it compares uh, the three local search algorithms we have talked about over three data sets of different size. What you can see here, yes, some summary, best score summary. So, as it seems, double search is the winner. It has uh, the best score in two data sets of three. Each uh, group of columns is uh, for each data set and each color is algorithm. Here you can see how the best score scales over uh, data sets of different size. Uh, you have also some uh, other graphs like uh, differences against uh, best winning score, differences uh, against worst score, so everything useful uh, you need to optimize your configuration. There are also performance summary, like time spent. Yeah, the time spent is the uh, same for all data sets and uh, all algorithms because I configured a uh, benchmarker to stop solving after three minutes. Average calculate count summary. Uh, this is a uh, good information if you are implementing your fitness function because uh, you want uh, always to have as high calculate count as possible. Uh, it enables you to reach a better solution in the same amount of time. Moreover, there are statistics for each data set. So again, uh, evolution of best score. There is a time. Here is score. And each this curve is our algorithm. So you can uh, see uh, how they performed on every data set you tried. However, it does not say anything about which algorithm is best in general. It uh, just says uh, that table search is the best with provided configuration. Here is the configuration of solver for these three data sets. Because, for example, I run the benchmark once more with the same configuration, but with uh, more data sets. And the winner is late acceptance. So if you want to choose algorithm and its configuration that uh, most suits you to your example. Uh, do as many do as many benchmarks as possible on real data. Well, uh, let me do a short recapitulation. We talked about uh, automated solution cloning, about shadow variables, which are improvements uh, that can help you uh, when you model your problem, your problem domain. We also 
talked about some improvements to fitness function and especially if you want to write your fitness function in rules. And we mentioned some new score types. Uh, I introduced uh, some new algorithms, late acceptance and step counting, hill climbing. Uh, we showed also some improvements in benchmarker reports. And that's basically what I wanted to say, what I personally find interesting in OctaPlanner 6. Uh, here is root of all materials for OctaPlanner documentation, binaries. Go ahead, uh, look there, download, play with those binaries, read the documentation. Uh, if you need some help, uh, you can find it on uh, OctaPlanner room on Freenode IRC. And if you can, please uh, provide us a feedback. What do you think about this presentation? And of course, contact to me. And now, uh, questions, please. Of course. So it seems like a really powerful piece of technology, but a bit complex, at least from my point of view. So my question is, is there any tool available which could help me from building Uh, well, could you repeat the question to the mic? Uh, of course, thanks. Uh, the question was: uh, OptaPlanner is a bit complex, and if there are any tool uh, which can help you to build your domain, uh, to write your fitness function uh, appropriately, is it correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm afraid OptaPlanner itself is a tool, so there is. Uh, not another tool uh, that uh, domain model these are just uh, Java classes with some uh, annotations you model your planning solution which holds some maybe list of planning entities and you mark it as planning solution by annotation uh, those planning entities are another classes. You also have to mark them uh, by planning entity annotation. And these planning entities uh, must have some reference to planning variables. And the getter for uh, this planning variable is also marked by annotation planning variable again. Uh, so you just need to read your data from some storage, XML, database, whatever, to those classes. Uh, in the solution, you have some lists of planning entities, of planning variables, and uh, this is stuff uh, OptaPlanner can play with. So it will read uh, those uh, collections and start to assign uh, planning variables to planning entities and uh, do some changes and uh, evaluate fitness function. Uh, about the fitness function, uh, there are three approaches. You can write it in also simple Java class, which can be good for some first overview, but it uh, scales pretty bad. Uh, because you iterate over wall collections uh, every time uh, the fitness functions is computed. Uh, better approach is use rules to compute your fitness function. Uh, that can be most suitable. Uh, if you really need performance, uh, you should use uh, incremental Java score calculation but it is uh, far more complex to implement. Uh, so there is no tooling, but only, I think, very good documentation, uh, very uh, much, uh, many examples. So just, you need to play with them and read the documentation. So another question, 
Okay. So if the recommended approach is to write those fitness function in rules, can I use a rule guided editor which is provided by JVPN? Actually, because that would be some kind of yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, good question. Uh, I will repeat the question. Uh, if we can use uh, some guided rules editors uh, to find, uh, uh, to implement fitness function in the rules, yes, we can. Uh, starting for, from OptaPlanner 6, you can use it. Okay. Uh, way of storing large data sets? Well, it uh, does not matter. Uh, you have to have uh, all your uh, entities and planning variables in memory. Just uh, save it in database, uh, in XML, and read it before uh, you start it uh, solving via OptaPlanner. Uh, because if you uh, want to read them during planning, it will definitely kill your performance. Okay. Any other questions? If not, okay. Thank you for your attention.